do BIM specialists or people who usually work with BIM get paid better? within the architecture world this recruiter like when i was um joining bamo actually told me that if you go the interior design route you can never come back to architecture i was scared i also thought you know re- you know a uh, rabbit equals to bim it's not um it's it's a big it's an important tool for sure like not to discount that uh, but there are other tools welcome to bless dark guys and today on this channel we have with us neha sadruddin who is currently a project bim manager at grimshaw architects in this interview she talks about her experience about learning bim and finally landing a job at brk engels group we also cover topics like the salaries of bim specialists and why neha finally decided to leave big it is a great and insightful conversation so let's get right to it all right so hey neha welcome to the channel welcome to bless dark you know a past couple of months so many people have uh you know on my channel been discussing bim wanting to know so much more about bim and that is why it is so nice to have you today on this channel so that we can sort of discuss everything there is to know about bim so thank you so much for being here yeah thank you thanks for having me i know we've been trying to schedule this for a while um so i'm glad that we finally are making it happen so i want to dive right into our discussion um and we'll come to the juicy stuff to the bim part a little later but before that i actually want to start with your background so i want to first start with uh, when did you graduate studying architecture and where did you study so i graduated in 2016 um from pratt institute it's an art and design school um here in new york and they have a <clears throat> they have a very good program for architecture both undergrad and grad so i did my bachelor's and it's a typical five year program um so yeah so you know once you graduated um where did you start working what was your first job so i actually moved to san francisco to work at an interior design firm called uh, bamo they specialize in multi residential and hospitality design and at the time i was more interested in exploring interiors because i thought that i didn't know too much about it so i sort of went in that direction and um, also wanted to try out a new city so that's uh, that was where i started we were sort of discussing when we had sort of discussed for this interview and you had told me an interesting story of how you actually ended up studying bim a little bit or training in it So uh let let's hear a little bit about that how did you actually start with bim Luckily for me when I actually joined Bamo that's where I got introduced properly introduced to to bim um before then I'd only taken like a rabbit course uh, or class in school which I didn't do very well at and I was like this is totally not for me but I got reintroduced um to the program at my first job at Bamo where they actually lucky for me they were transitioning from CAD to BIM and so they were looking for more people who sort of were interested in learning or already had some background in it so they asked me if I if I cared to learn um and I being you know sort of very motivated I was like yeah yeah I'm I'm down to learn and let's see if I can really sort of understand it so I was also curious uh as to what this whole thing is about and um so so they put me on a project um that was delivering in bim and that was like kind of my first um opportunity to kind of really get into it and it, it was a lot of sort of self learning so i i was looking up google and i was looking up um all these like forums and youtube videos um just to understand what it is um there were some seniors who you know had had experience so i was definitely kind of seeking their help as well but then uh, after that after that project was done i i i kind of realized okay there's like a very big sort of learning curve here um and i enjoyed it so i was like okay i don't want to go back to cad because if i do then i'm going to forget this um you know forget everything that i've learned So I approached my supervisor and I told her I was like can you please make sure that um you know I'm not put on CAD projects because I don't one I don't enjoy it as, as much but do I also want to keep honing this skill 
she was very respectful of that and um, also very encouraging and supportive. And because they needed they needed that skill so much anyway, so it kind of worked for them too. Around the same time that I joined, um, they had hired a BIM manager to help with this transition uh, from CAD to BIM. So there was a lot of work that um, had to be done to set up like office standards, um, libraries, you know, training materials, all the all those. Um, in-house um, sort of requirements. So when whenever I had some downtime um, from projects, I would work with her to to set up these things as well. One that helped me to understand, okay, what does it take to like really set up this BIM infrastructure inside an office? Also kind of helped me understand more um, about it and also brush up my skills. Um, so that's how I sort of got into it. And um, it's now you know now i'm here <laughs> now i'm like completely in immersed in this uh, niche you know it's actually in- very interesting to hear like you know that it started off as you know something that the office was also looking for and you were also sort of up for it and that's how it started and i love the fact that your office was also so encouraging that you wanted to continue within bim um and they were very supportive with that um you know you mentioned revit you mentioned that you had you know, started a little bit of Revit when you were studying, but it was very different from what actually BIM was. So, so let's actually discuss this because a lot of people equate BIM to Revit or vice versa. So, um, you know, what does BIM actually mean? So the, the literal description or definition um, of BIM is building information modeling. It includes a lot of tools. Um, one of them is, is Revit. So Revit is a part of BIM, but BIM in itself is, it's a process. It's a project delivery approach um, whereby multiple disciplines um, come together, um, collaborate on one platform and manage and coordinate, you know, all the information from all these different disciplines um, more efficiently. All that information is not just, you know, used during construction or during the design and construction. It's also used after. The idea is to use, you know, this data that you're gathering and um, kind of modeling while you're designing and constructing and using that to later manage and operate the building as well, because the building is going to go through sort of sort of multiple say either renovations or maintenance. Um, so you can look at it as, as three big phases, design, construction, and then operations and management um, or maintenance. So that's what BIM allows you to do. It allows you to maintain this information um, throughout the life cycle of, of the building and um, be a bit more efficient um, compared to the CAD sort of approach. I mean, that's interesting to hear because a lot of people, when I was also studying, um, I had the same thing that, you know, I just thought BIM was 3D modeling in Revit. Uh, And, you know, that you would just have that concrete beam depth and that that is what BIM meant. Yeah, I've been guilty of Uh, that too. I also thought, you know, you know, uh, Revit equals to BIM. It's not. Um, It's it's a big, it's an important tool for sure, like not to discount that, Uh, but there are other tools. It's. It, there's a whole, you know, it comes, it's one of one of the tools um, that really helps with it, but there's there's other tools, there's Navisworks, there is for clash detection, for management, like depending on what you are trying to get out of or what which part of the process you're actually involved in. Um, so Revit is just one part of it, um, yeah. Now we are halfway through our list, but before we continue, I want to tell you about the sponsors of this video, Skillshare. Now Skillshare is a platform that helps you upskill. Basically, it has a selection of courses from amazing instructors around the world which cover so many topics. As for designers and architects, they have classes on graphic design, logo creation, animation and many more. I even came across Steven Rubio's course called Architectural Digital Collage. Now we know Steven and he does some amazing work. In this course, he tells you exactly how to create digital collages like this. There are also many other classes, but this is the one I recommend you start with. And by the way, all of this is completely free. The first thousand people that click on the link in the description get access to the whole Skillshare catalog completely free for a month. So do check it out. And now let's get back to our video. All right. So now let's come to uh, big. 
So your next job was becoming a BIM specialist at Big. So first of all, let's talk about how you actually got a job there. I applied. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, not uh, nothing, you know, sort of out of the ordinary that you have to do. Um, I, I will say that it wasn't. Um, it wasn't the first job that I applied to when I did decide to kind of start looking again. I I think at the time I had been at Bamo for three years. And I was sort of realizing that, okay, I've done interiors and now I kind of want to go back to architecture. I also wanted to go back to New York. So those are the two main sort of factors that I uh, was basing my decision on. And I didn't only sort of apply for uh, BIM roles in the beginning. I was applying to, I was still applying to design roles. And, you know, it took me about six to eight months to really kind of filter out um, the, the roles that I didn't want, actually didn't want to do. So um, I know there are a lot of people who are like, yeah, let's just apply to everything. I've done that too, um, you know. Uh, but I think realizing that, okay, these are the things that I actually want to be doing um, helps you then kind of, you know, channel your energy into or or focus the energy on to just, you know, one type of application or the applications that actually matter to you. So once I kind of decided that, okay, I want to explore the BIM, BIM route, that's, that's when I started to apply uh, to BIM specific roles and uh, BIG was one of them. I was a little bit late in that process. Um, so they had an opening that was about two months old. So I went ahead and applied, but I did also reach out to um, to the manager who then became my manager to just make sure that the opening, you know, was still, they were still accepting applications. They were still interviewing. So that, you know, sort of helped me stand out from the rest of the applications because I got a phone call out of it. So there was a little bit more of an interaction and I could really present my interest a lot better. So I definitely encourage everybody to to use LinkedIn to their benefit. Um, it's it's a great resource. It's not all it wasn't always there. So it actually is making making it easier for you to to get the job that you really want. Um, so even if there isn't an, an opening um, somewhere, if there is a team that you want to be a part of, I, I always encourage people to kind of reach out to to the people in that team just to get an idea of like what is it like to, to be part of it um, so that later when there is an opening, they might even, you know, remember you and they might even just reach out to you before they post the opening. So I think there's a lot of benefits to networking. You know, within what you said, there were two interesting points. One was when you just said, I applied is I think one of the first things is is you do have to sort of apply as well to first of all get a job there. It's it's build up your your folio, build up your work as much as you can, and then actually apply. Um, and I think reaching out was a great and this is something I think a lot of people will take from it is reaching out to people, just being in communication with people who are at the firms and at the uh, particular departments that you're looking forward to. The second thing I found really, really interesting was that, you know, when you said that you realized that your interests were more towards uh, the construction side of thing, and that is when you properly started applying for BIM. And, you know, that is interesting to hear because architecture today is very, very diverse. And that is what I keep telling people. It's so diverse, like within architecture, there's so many things to do. And so uh, that traditional architect route, which used to exist, exist 50 years ago, today that's specialized into 10 different professions. Uh, and so within architecture, you can then get in, realize which one you're better at or which one you have more of an inkling to, uh, and then sort of go towards that. And that you only get once you're in the profession. You cannot get a handle of all of that once you're studying. Of course, yeah. No, I totally agree. And there's, yeah, there's multiple career paths now. I was also quite scared actually in the beginning where I was like, oh, if I go down go down this path and you know what if I don't like it or what if I'm not good at it you know how do I get what if I have to get back to um the design path or a di you know how do I then how am I going to pivot again um am I going to get stuck it's all it's all in your head I remember somebody this recruiter like when I was um joining BAMO actually um told me that if you go the interior design route 
you can never come back to architecture. Um, and I, I, I mean, I was a bit scared. And you know, when I did decide that, oh, now I want to go back to architecture, like, you know, her words were like really kind of um, ringing in my head, and I, I was scared, but. I don't know, like, you shouldn't let somebody, like, deter you from trying. And I feel like if you just try true, true. hard enough, you can you can make it happen. So I think pivoting is, it's becoming very common now. Like, nobody holds the same position throughout their life. It's, you know, um, so people are more accepting of um, people, like, coming from different backgrounds. Um, so I, I don't think that should kind of restrict you or um, hold you back from exploring something new even if you don't know too much about it um yes very true so when you were working at big you went on to become from a bim specialist to a senior bim specialist so what exactly is the difference between the two roles and um can you also tell us a little bit about the hierarchy that exists within let's say the bim group i don't think in terms of like the work um there's too much too much like difference at big like we were you know, a team of three people. So uh, we always kind of would um, divide the project work. The, the roles stayed pretty much the same. I, I would say that it's more about responsibility. It's more about, you know, um, experience that you kind of, or the senior title kind of comes with experience. Um, and also a little bit more independence. So you are able to kind of take charge of the projects. Um, so you're less, Kind of reliant on on your seniors um, because you kind of you know know a little bit more and um, are able to run with it on your own. So I think it's more of just that you can now that you can lead the BIM deliverables or the BIM side of things, you kind of run with it on your own. So uh, I think a senior just is it's it's more about just an experience thing. But I think overall the role sort of stays the same where you are partly supporting projects and partly um, developing in-house sort of um, standards or libraries, um, any sort of R&D type of work, um, depending on what your what your organization kind of is interested in or or needs work in. In terms of hierarchy, uh, I I think the, the the junior most role is is a BIM specialist. Um, some offices, I think, also have the title BIM coordinator. I think those are kind of similar um, and then you have senior BIM specialist, um, project BIM manager, which is what I am currently. You can then become a studio or office BIM manager where you are kind of responsible for the entire team. Above that would be like a BIM director or a head of department. Um, you know, some, some, uh, some offices have a head of design technology as well. Um, so that kind of encapsulates like all things design technology, so viz or computational, like all of those things. So there's, I think BIM then becomes one department under that. So that is roughly the kind of hierarchy that I've I've seen and um, that I know of. Let's also talk a little bit about your experience at BIG. Like how was working there like? Yeah, it, it was great. Um, I have really fond memories of it. And, um, you know, it's they're a very talented uh, group of people, um, very exciting projects. Um, every project is very, very different um, in in the form, in you know the design, and so every every project kind of brought a new challenge. That um, was definitely super sort of fun to to be a part of, and the people, you know, the people are also very creative, and I, I had a terrific time um, working there. Yeah. So after big, you sort of today work at Grimshaw Architects and you are a BIM manager now. Firstly, well, like, why did you decide to leave big um, and, and pursue Grimshaw Architects? I just thought it was a opportunity, you know, to learn something new, to um, sort of work with a new group of people, understand how a different office kind of works. It was mostly to kind of diversify my experience um, rather than something that I wasn't happy about at big it was just you know I wanted to explore something new it's, I think every time I've <laughs> changed jobs it's mostly you know you you just want to gain a different perspective different experience I will say that um, the design technology team at Grimshaw is is bigger um, they have 
they have more offices around the globe so i was interested in kind of being part of a bigger group just um just kind of see how how you know a bigger organization kind of deals with uh, design technology or approaches it and um so so that was the initial thing like exposure and and experience all right so um you know when we talk about bim in the architecture industry today so what do you think is the importance of bim in the overall architecture industry how important is it uh like having the bim knowledge or, or for firms to get integrated with bim and also do bim specialists or people who usually work with bim get paid better within the architecture world <laughs> yes yes i think that um bim it as a skill is definitely you know high in demand right now and it's continue continuing to grow because more and more offices are sort of moving away from the cad um approach they are adopting bim and so that skill is i think going to continue to be in demand um for a while clients also these days want um you know architects and or the entire sort of um design team to deliver in bim so they have requirements i think it's going to continue to grow the, the construction i think industry is is you know is moving away from the analog uh, sort of format it's it, the digitization of construction is going to continue to happen so bim is you know one part of a one part of that so it, it's the it's kind of the future and i think as architects you are only going to benefit from having those skills there, there's no downside to it um you can you can have bim skills and you can continue to be an architect and continue to design as well it doesn't mean that just because like the bim specialist to bim manager route is not the only career path that um that is open to people with bim skills um that is just one one route you can be part of the bim team or you can be continue to be part of the design team um and um also have those skills and you will be valued a lot more um than somebody who doesn't uh in terms of pay yes uh can't deny that it is um it does pay higher i've read you know it's probably maybe 20 to 30% um higher i am not entirely certain on those statistics but it, it it's a i think a significant uh pay gap or pay rise so it's high demand low supply so <laughs> that <laughs> that kind of um explains it and uh, i don't so, know if so so you're saying if we get enough if we succeed in getting enough people trained in bim <laughs> if you think right there it's always like I, i mean it's not like bim is going to be you know the thing for yeah there will always be something new there will be a new thing that's going to come out and then um people are going to require expertise in that so i think sure. that um for now bim is is the one that's in demand so it pays i think i you've touched upon an interesting point there is that you know as soon new things keep coming up the more willing you are to learn newer things and specialize in that you're also paid more because again you will be one of the few people who actually have knowledge in that right now uh bim is that right now is because it is spreading all over the world and not as many people have the knowledge but it's also important to hold on to that learning of newer skills uh and being open to them as soon as they come out so you know if somebody wants to sort of uh upskill in bim and you know uh want to learn it so like where does one begin so there is two two things that i sort of you know talk about or um emphasize on is one you know if you want to learn the skills there's plenty of courses out there um there it, there are plenty of sort of videos um or pre- youtube channels um that you know specifically um have tutorials for for revit or navisworks um dynamo like all of those tools um so one part of it is to to start learning the tools i think that's a great way to kind of get started and that's how you will understand how it kind of ties into the entire process the other thing is definitely sort of being on a project that is delivering in bim 
um, you need to kind of understand the construction process, which right out of school, you pretty much don't know anything um, about how a project gets constructed, right? So to see a project from inception through, you know, at least through the end of like um, the documentation of it, um, you, I would say it's important to kind of have that experience uh, so that if so that you can then understand, OK, how does BIM make this better or how, you know, you can then understand how to strategize. They kind of kind of work together. It's not just, oh, if you know Revit, then you're done. Or if you know like two or three tools, then you're done. Um, I think it's the tools and then also the experience of being on projects and building projects. So if somebody is applying for, you know, a, a BIM role within a company, what should their portfolio be? Would it be different from an architectural portfolio, let's say? Yes, I would probably encourage them to um, show their BIM skills, right? If, if it's a BIM specific role. So um, definitely include any projects that you've done in using any of the BIM tools, whether it's Revit, whether it's Navisworks, um, any scripting um, or any even like automation, like today, like even coding is like a, a good skill to have, like um, if you want to be part of maybe not the BIM team, but like a design technology department, like some people kind of, some offices have, um, have that as well. I would probably not put in so much design related uh, projects or work um, just because you do tend to not be that involved in design. So, you know, uh, unless you're doing like, it, it's a modeling task or something like that, uh, I would, I would um, definitely put that in. Um, the other thing is like any experience to show that you have delivered or been on a project and like, you know how to document a project, um, that I think is very, very important. Um, so if you have been working if, um, and you have some professional experience in delivering a project and documenting it, um, definitely show that. Or, you know, what I did when I was applying, um, I, I, I spoke about like working with the BIM manager to develop the office sort of content and libraries. Um, so that is, you know, something that you could also Add. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers uh, all the questions that I had for you today. Um, but let's come to our last question, which is basically something I ask everybody. But I think for you, it will be much more specified to a BIM specialist role is, is what advice do you have for somebody who wants to pursue this, pursue BIM as a field of interest? Uh, and maybe is, is a student or is a fresh graduate? If you haven't sort of taken any courses, like maybe you want to start like looking at courses. Um, there are there is um, plenty of those out there. There is the LinkedIn learning courses. There is one is to X um, that has a pretty good course. There's also Revit Pure, um, which is a, one of my favorite like YouTube uh, channels. Um, they have great sort of tutorials. Um, so I think it would uh, you know, if, if you're looking at that, definitely use those to to start upskilling. Try it out. Talk to people. Um, talk to people who are in those roles um, just to understand whether it's something that you will are interested in or will like and will be good at. Um, also get experience like don't don't focus on just um, learning tools, focus on understanding like the industry and the workflows that that are you know part of uh, a part of the industry. So because there is there is a strategy component to BIM. Um, if you want to, especially if you want to go like the BIM specialist route, um, I think you should know how to strategize. You should know how to decide like what kind of workflows are going to work best for a particular project, depending on its constraints and budget. Every time you are on a project, like. I, I always go back to analyze, you know, what could I have done better? Um, sometimes, you know, there's, there's no perfect project. There's always a learning curve with each project. So if say a certain task is taking super long, maybe there is a tool out there that's going to help automate it. Um, so those, those are the kind of things that, um, you know, your day to day will look like um, in a BIM role. So 
maybe start you know thinking about those things perfect um thank you so much neha thank you so much for taking out the time uh for this video and i'm sure like uh people would have a lot of questions also like beyond this video also maybe we could do a part two later and people could let us know uh you know questions and everything or anything going through your head in the comments below maybe we could discuss below or do another video later but like let's have a discussion going and thank you so much neha for taking out the time no thanks for having me it was a pleasure and that was it you guys that was my complete conversation with neha of course if you have any questions about what we discussed today you can let me know in the comments below also do not forget to give this video a thumbs up to like it and to subscribe to bless dark also hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever a new video comes up if you wish to support bless dark you can do so via three sources through patreon through youtube memberships and through paypal the links for all three are in the description below and i will see you soon with more such content until then bye bye